So, now uh, we have been discussing about uh, the data mining and its implica implications for knowledge management, but we also need to ensure that uh, when you are going for data mining, what kind of data we are using for data mining, right? And then you have to see that there are certain problems or challenges which are associated with data mining are removed, because if these are uh, acting as a constraint, then what will happen? Your data would not be correct and whatever mining efforts is made through statistical analysis or machine learning and then whatever outcomes out uh, are coming out of this is not correct, right. So, there could be uh, different kind of problems like there could be data related problems, right. If the quality is good not good or the data is not complete, there is a missing data or there is a incorrect data, right. So, then it will not get good results, right. Similarly, there are problems related to the management, right. If the data is too long, too expensive, uh, you are going to select bad uh, uh, vendors, then uh, these uh, the data mining activities may be hampered. Similarly, how the data is structured, the structural problem may be there, right. Uh, structural problem is related to basically the people and the culture part, right. Whether people are really interested to go for data mining or not, right. Whether the commit among the, uh, commitment among the analysts, okay, and knowledge developers, knowledge users for these kind of things or not. What kind of culture and structure you have in the organization, okay. Whether you have a norm in the organization to go for this kind of data mining activities, regularly extract information and knowledge from the data or not, okay. What kind of structure you have? A structure means the structure of the organization. Whether this kind of structure across levels facilitate this kind of process or not, and whether uh, there is a coordination among the data mine uh, miners and uh, um, other managers vertically and horizontally to see that how this data mining activity is integrated across processes to ensure a good information coming out of it and it is being used by the managers at across levels. And then uh, the other issues like modeling mistakes with the suppose uh, you have developed certain model, but the model does not fit into the data, then what will you do? It means either your tools are not correct or your assumptions are not correct, right, or the kind of samples that you have taken is not correct. So, when you are going to use certain sampling techniques, make sure that it is more randomized in the process, right, because sometimes convenient and uh, uh, data collected through convenient sampling or purpose sampling may not go give good results. So, it is al always advised to go for a more representative sampling and so that the data fits into the normal distribution curve and you get better results, right. And then you test it properly, you use appropriate, appropriate statistical tools to get certain inferences from the data. And that is why you need to see that these barriers, obstacles to data is not there, whether it is related to data itself, whether it is the organization or the management or even when you are going to uh, the analysis of the data, especially the mining part, okay because data cannot be mined unless it is good quality, it is perfect data, okay. And then we have developed better models, good models, right, for testing the data, right. So, it is very, very important that you have to understand the business requirement before you go for it, okay. Uh, because unless you have a business requirement, a business, business justification, you should not go for data mining activities, right. Otherwise, you will not be able to get any benefit out of it. So, you make sure that what is the objective of that and data mining at the first stage and whether you have a real business case to answer for this data mining or not. Then only you go for it, otherwise not, right. right? You should do not do not take an experiment or do not go for an experiment to go for data mining and then uh, go for data mining and then uh, because there will be no, uh, even if there is certain outcomes, you will not be able to make use of it and then you try to find out a context where to use it, what to do with this information, right. So, first you need to identify and then do not carelessly handle the data, right. There is lot of issues like over do not go for over quantifying the data, do not go for miscoding the data. So, these are the basically things related to the preparation of the data, okay. Identify what are the sampling errors that is very, very important, okay. Then you identify the what kind of precision you are looking forward to, okay. at what level of significance you want to conduct it. And then uh, if there are missing values, whether you are going to include and exclude, if you are going to include them, what could be the rules for uh, uh, putting values there or if you are going to exclude, why you want to exclude this, because this may reduce your data set and at the same time, this may not give you correct information also, right. So, these are some of the issues related to data handling which must be looked into. 
And then important thing is uh, that sometimes you go from validate certain models and you force your data to fit into the model, right. Because you are having a lot of data, then you think that okay, it will fit into the data. It might fit into the data, but sometimes it is not given, uh, giving good results. And there are certain results which may be, may be not, may not be correct, okay. So, you need to identify that when you are going to validate certain models using certain data mining techniques, with, whether it is statistical or, or using artificial intelligence techniques, either for the classification or prediction or just simply associating certain variables, right. You need to ensure that model better fits into the data, there are no outliers, right. It fits into the uh, normal uh, distribution curve, right. Otherwise, what will happen? Even if you have the data and it is not proper data and you are going to validate it, it may not be correct, right. So, make sure that the data that is there at your hand is correct, it is proper, so that you can make better use of this data. Then, most important thing is that why you want to go for data mining? The basic objective is transforming data into knowledge, right. So, you move from data to information right, when you organize them and ultimately you are going to analyze the data to get the information right. So, data mining is not an alchemic process, now it is see it is not that okay, automatically data would be converted into knowledge. You have to transform them this raw data into some kind of knowledge right and if you are not able to do it probably it, it is not going to be beneficial because for example, if you do not have correct data or if you are not going to use appropriate uh, statistical techniques or you are not going to use correct models okay, or you are not going to use correct information, then probably you will not be able to transform data into knowledge properly. So, the idea is that uh, the top management or the managers who are responsible for data manage, mining, they must consider certain things like uh, make sure that they should be able to identify the business needs and where they are going to apply the information or the knowledge that is coming out of the data mining. Okay. And whether this is going to be done inside the organization, if you have business analysts, then you make use of them, it is cost effective or you can go for outsourcing this kind of thing, where you have external business analysts who are going to um, mine the data depending upon your requirement. Okay. And if you are going for uh, outsourcing this kind of uh, services data mining, then you identify a suitable word, uh, vendor who has experience okay. and it may be cost effective also. And then you develop a team who is responsible for taking this kind of activities on a regular basis, because you know that is a cycle which goes on a regular basis. So, you need to continuously mine your data to extract useful information and that is where it is very important to see that whether you are really able to transform data into useful knowledge or not and it is a major concern for most of the managers. Then once we have talked about uh, data mining activities, uh, next thing that we are going to talk about is knowledge portals. And if you look at knowledge portals, they also provide lot of data. Okay. So, it is also a part of the data uh, uh, actually and then very specifically we are going to see that what kind of data is provided by the knowledge portals. Okay. So, we will discuss uh, uh, so some of these knowledge portals which has been created by the uh, businesses. and. Then we will look into the challenges okay, uh, in terms of how we are going to transform business using these knowledge portals, what are the market potentials okay. and then we will also look into the applications okay, that how we go upon uh, building in enterprises uh, portals, okay, how we go about the sponsoring and then we also look into the certain technical issues that what would the wind with what kind of software and hardware integration is going to be there and what kind of things we are going to put on the knowledge portal. right? So, with this we uh, proceed uh, with knowledge portals. Okay. Uh, knowledge portals are nothing else but virtual workplaces, right? Okay, where you can share information okay, across users. Okay. Say for example, if you have this say blog okay, or you have a, a website okay, of the organization and if you are going to put lot of data information over there, that could be used as a portal also, right? And then you have uh, access to structured data, right. One, one, one kind of knowledge portals could be say for example, libraries. Okay. Libraries basically support knowledge sharing across users, across categories right? and it is a storehouse of information you can say structured data 
now you are going to make use of the library okay, in a very structured manner. Okay. And then whatever information you are getting from different sources in the library, you can organize them. Okay. So, and that is where uh, libraries, especially I am not talking about the uh, physical libraries, but I am talking about the digital libraries. Okay. So, digital library could be considered as one of the knowledge portals. Organizations website which uh, store data, they could also be considered as knowledge portals. If you go to the website for say Ministry of Labor, you will find lot of data related to the labor, so which which you can extract and make use of it after analyzing. So that also give you lot of information about, uh, related to the labor activities. It could be related to labor acts. It could be related to labor productivity. It could be related to trade union activities and all kind of data you can find out there, right? So they these are virtual knowledge uh, workplaces where you can get lot of information, right? And then uh, basically you have to see that whether you have access to these uh, places where the data is stored in a digital form, right? And uh, what are its applications, right? So suppose you are doing a research, then you can use digital library to identify uh, the kind of research that is being done, okay? And then how these research is going to be integrated for your purpose, right? It is also used for facilitating collaborations across employees. For example, you have a knowledge portal where you are going to share knowledge. Right. So, suppose you have a query, you could put it in the blog or the portal or knowledge sharing portal and then there could be employees who are going to answer these portals okay. and that is how you can collaborate and share knowledge with each other. Okay. And then you can also assist, uh, the organization can assist itself in reaching out to the customers. How? Because you know ultimately if you link it to the customer, for example, if you have customer service centers, right, virtual customer service, service centers like we have call centers today, right which exist and then you just simply call them and get assistance from there, right? depending upon uh, the kind of requirement that you have. Okay. So, knowledge portals are very, very important because it allows producers and users of knowledge to interact with each other okay. and then uh, you can both of them have better interface, okay. knowledge producer uh, knowledge producer interface and knowledge customers user interface. Okay. Now, moving further, if you look at how these uh, 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 portals have come up. Uh, as a way of development is that we started with search engines. Now, you, have, you know that we have lot of search engines. We have also lot of navigational sites like Google. We have a uh, say uh, these are navigation sites or Yahoo is a navigation sites, right. Alta Vista is a search engine, right. There are lot of search engines which are available which help you to uh, basically retrieve uh, useful information, right. So, you starting from search engines to navigation sites to portals. So, we have moved uh, way ahead from search engines to navigation sites to the portals. So, portals have eva evolved as a way to have both the capabilities of a search engine and also a navigation site, right. Uh, because if you look at uh, uh, portals, it al does not only include search indices you where you can collaborate through portals and all kind of things, but it is more personalized because you can interact one to one with people okay? and you can have lot of archive, archives there. So, far as content is concerned, so you also need some kind of architecture to manage the content that is available at the portals. Okay? For example, Amazon.com, okay? it is a portal, it is interactive, you can look for a product, okay? you can collaborate also, you can sell there also. You, it could be more personalized depending upon the requirement, you can see what is required and then accordingly uh, the product can be customized for you and then let there are lot of content and then you can search out of this content what is required by you. Navigation sites like we have Google, Yahoo and these kind of things, basically you have search attributes and then you can classify and categorize the content based on the relevant information. Okay. So, the portals have come, have come a long way starting with search engines to navigation sites. Okay, so, if you look at portals, they are more important compared to any uh, search engine or navigation sites. Now, we have two kind of portals, one is known as knowledge portal, the other, the other one is in, uh, information portal. Now, if you look at information portals, what actually happens? Information portals only have information. Okay. The only thing is that you have to access this information and then you have to see that how you are going to make use of it. The source of information could be internal or external, but when I am talking about knowledge portals, okay, knowledge portals are basically having um, a different uh, kind of characteristics or traits, right. Uh, it is aimed at certain things, right. You are going to make use of knowledge for certain activities, right. 
not only that, but it, al it is also related to different cycles of the knowledge man management like acquisition, production, transmission or management also. Okay. So, it is not only limited to say, uh, this, uh, say content management, right. The for example, information portals will basically manage the content, but inform uh, knowledge portals are uh, way ahead com uh, and they complete, they basically look at the entire KM cycle starting with acquisition, production, transmission and management, right. And it is very, very important to have these kind of things, because and in uh, uh, an uh, enterprise portal basically okay, th is had just one system, but uh, knowledge portals may be having different kind of systems are related to uh, different activities of the knowledge management like knowledge sharing, knowledge discovery, knowledge acquisition, knowledge transmission and knowledge management. right? So, this is the difference between that and then uh, when you are going to have uh, knowledge portals, you have to see that the major challenge is that people are going to make use of it for business applications. Okay. So, you have to make sure that uh, you are able to optimize the use of uh, knowledge portals by the people to make use of it in the day to day processes, so that they are able to improve the quality and in a reduce the cost. Okay. So, it is very, very important that people are going to make use of this uh, knowledge portal and for that what you need to do, you need to communicate and tell them what kind of information is there in the knowledge portal and how they uh, for what it can be used. And once it is done, you are going to optimize the performance for operational processes and at the same time, you can also reduce the cost. Then you also need to commercialize your products at the lower process processes. So, you need to communicate people that what are the advantages of using these knowledge portals for working effectively. Then when you are going to look at uh, this uh, how portal is going to help you to transform your business. Okay. So, the basically wha what happens in a portal the knowledge is available in a documented form electronic documents. right? So, and this is um, changing very fast I mean the quantum of knowledge that is uh, going to be available tomorrow is going to be huge. Right? So, the speed at which the quality and quantity of knowledge is growing is very uh, is tremendous. So, the uh, one major uh, problem that these portals are facing is that how to archive classify and manage the content related to the knowledge of a huge uh, the huge knowledge base that is coming up okay because you have less time to market okay uh, there is a uh, turnover of the knowledge workers because they are leaving the jobs right and see you have more demanding customers so you have challenges at three fronts first from the customers front you need to satisfy the requirements in terms of products and services you also need to look at employees you need to make them happy and satisfied okay and meet their expectations and challenges, otherwise they would leave. Then there is a shortened time to market that is since product life cycle is very short and you know that more and more innovative products are coming. So, it has become a major business challenge for organizations to come out with new products, new services, so that they are able to retain customers. Okay. So, since there is a certain time to market because of the product life certain pro, uh, certain product life cycle, it is very, very important that how these knowledge portals are going to be used by the people to be more creative and innovative in their performance. Then uh, most of the organizations have already launched these kind of programs okay. and there was a survey which was done to see that what are the motives because of which organizations have gone, gone for these kind of uh, knowledge management programs. Okay. See, most of the business objectives have um, one important motive that is to make profits. Okay. Apart from making profits, another major challenge that was identified is that they want to retain key talent with the organization okay. and they also want to retain customers. Okay. So, the most important finding suggests that most of the organizations have gone for KM systems to increase their market profit revenues right going for more products and services new markets reducing their costs okay and also to retain customers but it does not talk about employees except for retaining key talents and expertise because they can directly link it with the profit and uh, say services right so if you look at uh, the motives for organizations to launch these kind of program it is very clear that they want to make use of this KM system to make profits or uh, better revenues, retain talents, right, customers, 
increase the market share right and then uh, introducing new products in markets right and also ensure that they are able to reduce cost and improve the quality of the products right so these are the motives for which organizations have gone for so now if you look at productivity definitely uh, how it is going to be done see starting with uh, if you look at the arrows it shows that how we move up and uh, so far as the benefits are concerned this hierarchy starting with identifying experts you can go for sharing knowledge then you look at the quality of the data then how this quality of data is going to help you to take better decisions through data mining okay and how you can collaborate uh, across verticals uh, vertically or horizontally share the knowledge okay and also identifying documents so these are the activities uh, which can be done but all this need to be linked with productivity of the organizations now when it comes to knowledge portals what are the use you can manage your email traffic you have to look at your bandwidth you have to see that how, how much time you are going to spend on meetings phone calls what is your response times what are the efforts that you have make which is useless actually what is the operating cost how much time you take to market a product right so these are some of the in, um, issues where these knowledge portals can help you then moving further then you have to look at the content of a knowledge portal what does a knowledge portal include okay it include content it include information related to business intelligence that is once you have mined the data then what are the decisions that has been come up okay and how are going to implement those decisions in the organizations knowledge uh, knowledge portals also include data warehouses and data marts and also you have to see that you are able to better manage data, data in terms of quality accuracy and these kind of things now what are the technologies that is used by these knowledge portals include you are collect data you are going to classify data you are going to distribute this data <laughs> across groups and people and then you should see that how are going to collaborate publish or how are going to personalize this information okay using these knowledge portals and then how are going to search or navigate uh, uh, different kind of information or knowledge that is available with the organization then moving further if you look at this okay like say for example search okay whether you have quick access to information to facilitate certain business processes or not okay how are going to categorize different kind of information then uh, when it comes to query reporting and analysis okay how it helps you to go for better business support right then uh, uh, not only uh, business decision support but also how are going to disseminate information and share knowledge with each other and then how are going to integrate information uh, and its applications okay so you have to see that how have access information what kind of interface is there how are going to uh, use that interface okay and then uh, especially publish and subscribe that is how with different business processes where have collaborated and shared are going to help you to improve your business performance that is very very important because ultimately what matters is bottom line right and then you go for personalization also that is the kind of inter in, uh, interface that you have it could be more personal where one to inter one interaction is going to be there and that helps you to increase your performance and then what kind of collaboration is there there could be human to human interaction that is asynchronous or there could be synchronous where you are going to be computer based right so even uh, uh, asynchronous collaboration which is going to be, to be which is going to be between uh, two people and there you can see that yes you are linked with the computers you are able to talk you are going to ask questions response okay uh, without any time or space constraints like you are using say video conferencing right or skype right so two people can collaborate interact with each other okay without any constraint of time and space okay and then you can ask questions you can respond uh, and then the advantage that is anywhere any time access is there then synchronous collaboration is that yes it is also human to human but computer based but it happens immediately right for example if you have a problem then again you use the audio video or the data technologies to find it out right but in a asynchronous uh, uh, basically collaboration uh, you don't have any time and space constraints right but in synchronous uh, collaboration the only difference is that it has to be done immediately because there are time and space constraints and then the job is to be done immediately and the distinction that is made between uh, asynchronous and synchronous is that what kind of technology you are using push technology or pull technology okay 
So, push technology uh, places are where information is a in a place where it is difficult to avoid or saying it. But in a pull technology, it requires you to take a specific actions to retrieve information. It means the data content is there, and then you try to extract the content to get the information. Okay. In plus, uh, push technology, what happens? Yes, it is pushing you to use it, right? It means you are being forced by that kind of information to go for it, right? And in pulling, what happens? That is, you have to go for it. So, push technology is that, that where you are attracted to go for it, and pull technology that where you, if you need it, and then you look for it, right? So, that is the difference between push and pull technologies. Now, look at uh, the portal architecture, that is how the portal architecture looks like. I am not giving any specific portal, I am just giving it a uh, prototype. Uh, of a portal architecture. Okay. So, it includes three things that is the knowledge desktop, services and systems. Okay. Now, if you look at knowledge desktop, it looks like this. This is the knowledge portal, these are the knowledge tools that is available there. Then that is how you are going to search and deliver the information. In knowledge services, you have three kind of things, collaboration that is how you are going to interact and relate with others, document management which is there is and how it can be used and then you have facilities for data warehouses or business centers including data analysis right then this is linked with tracking and flow because here is a system basically which include all kind of things logic communication where it is also included you have security directory replication and uh, there are web administrators right so this is how a por portal architecture looks like and it has three parts first part second part and third part this is system related, this is services related and this is what it looks like, that is where you are going to interact. right? Now, if you look at collaboration tools, you have to say, if you are using lot of collaboration tools like you are using web browsers, emails, right? search functions are there. Okay? Uh, you have multipurpose data and then that is, uh, you have collaborative services also, where you can have access and easy to use data, then you have web services, you have indexing services also for full text search of documents. right? For example, if you go to library databases right, and then uh, different kind of databases are hosted by these libraries. So, if you go to particular database, you click there okay, and then you provide a full list of uh, databases or the data related to different uh, journals or research papers and then you click on that and then you can get full text documents also. right? So, that is what we call indexing services of a digital library and it is well organized central storage location because you have a central library where it is located and from where you can interact and relate yourself. right? Now, if you look at uh, synchronous basically uh, synchronous collaboration happens through to, as I told you through teleconferencing, video conferencing and online chat forums. right? Most of the online uh, things are happening like teleconferencing the advantage is that it is immediate. Okay? The disadvantage is yes, it is expensive, if it does not work well then you have a problem. Video conferencing is again uh, say is computer connected actually and uh, you have a technology, but you need to see that you have the system in place which is going to help you to go for these kind of things. right? For example, you have need to have a good connection, good bandwidth and these kind of things and they have online chat, chat uh, forums okay? like we have uh, twitters, facebook and all kind of uh, forums are available. Okay? So, you can uh, communicate uh, uh, with people depending upon the requirement using a computer screen, but only requirement is that uh, the systems requirement must be met. Okay. Then you have email lists like for example, uh, you want to send uh, mail to lot of people okay. like uh, in our institute we have a gmail system. So, any information that is dis disseminated to the people is sent to all the people. Okay. Then you have best way decision discussion forums okay, like we have a portal where people are and complain can give adva advice and uh, also um, uh, make complaints or can give suggestions also what needs to be done. Okay. Then we have lotus notes um, from IBM, okay. it is very comprehensive, it, it uh, basically provides you a comprehensive solutions, um, because the technology is very very strong here, it is used basically for communication as well as document management. The advantage is that these kind of uh, uh, techniques are very very expensive when it is compared to the synchronous collaboration. Now, if you look uh, this that how this came architecture work this is example from the world bank. Okay. You know that world bank uses uh, this knowledge management system in a big way and they have information for uh, classifying the knowledge. So, they are basically basically using actually is the Oracle uh, data engine that is XML to drive document management system 
and that is linked to lotus nodes group wear. Now, if you look at this uh, XML is in the language of exchange that is used and then it leads to output strategy that is lotus nodes or oracle. Now, if you look at this hierarchy, this is the architecture of the knowledge management architecture of the world bank. Knowledge is there, then you have oracle for indexing, you have lotus nodes for communication document management. Down the line you have softwares like uh, SAP, PeopleSoft, electronic document management systems and databases. So, basically codification technologies are used to uh, see that uh, what is the return on investment, to see that how much is being used, what is the benefit of having this kind of knowledge management system in the organization. Now, moving to this, we also have intelligent agents or uh, tools that can be applied uh, in the context of enterprise knowledge portals, okay. uh, but it is not yet developed much. Okay. Basically, there are softwares which can execute huge amount of data for different activities, but it, it is uh, still in, uh, in the beginning stage. right? Now, if you look at this, they can go for customized service, com, uh, service assistance on through online services. For example, if you acquire related to the customer service, you call them, it automatically routes it, okay, gives you reply, but it is still uh, in the development phase. Okay. You can go for customer profi profiling or you can integrate profi uh, profile of the customers with uh, marketing activities. Right. You can also predict requirements of the customer using data mining techniques. Okay or even you can go for negotiating, price, uh, negotiating prices or payment schedules based on your requirement right. okay. and also financial transaction can be done from the customers behalf. So, there are lot of benefits, but still it in the infancy stage. So, these are the new trends in the portal technologies which has come up off late right. You are going for just in time uh, solutions and services. So, uh, you have to see certain things like you have better human computer interactions. Okay. So, it is going to be more situation tailored based interaction between the people and the system. Similarly, you are going to see that yes, you have anal uh, analytical tools for training and collaboration and that is where you get better performance support. Then you have a knowledge management systems and also digital library right. And ultimately, you are going to have you need to create more collaborative environment and intelligent agents. These intelligent agents basically helps you to monitor, filter, search, extract, translate, all mine, visualize, even summarize information for different requirements. Okay. So, it is a more integrated approach to look, look at the things in a more holistic way, not only monitoring and filtering data or mining and visualizing data, but also giving you a lot of information that can be used by you for different activities. right? Moving to next is you have to see that yes, knowledge sharing is a big issue. You have to make sure that the content is structured in such a way, the quality requirements are met, right. It is integrated with the system, security issues are taken care and it is synchronized with the technology. So, that you can use these knowledge portals for better knowledge sharing. Similarly, you have to see that what are the different kind of portals which are available like Lotus is there, open text is there and uh, the characteristics and the use is also defined here. For example, if you look lotus notes, you know that self creating refining taxonomy is used, it is more personal resource linked to data sources. Okay. It goes for advanced collaboration okay. you have and then it go for rapid application development okay. and you can really associate it with knowledge management packages like open text. Uh, it is also integrated knowledge management system, but it is used for knowledge man, uh, document management basically and customer collaboration. Similarly, you also have plum tree, uh, which is very easy in extensive content application integration. The advantage is that it, it is performance and scalability, it has better security features, uh, data taxonomies are taken care. Okay. You have different kind of data accesses and it can be customized also depending upon the requirement. Then you have another web meta one engine and these are the new developments which have taken place in terms of its usability, tracking site statistics content streaming to wireless services also. These are the new things which is coming up. You know that even without internet you can uh, use certain applications okay, and perform certain tasks. Okay. So, these are the new developments which is coming up in, uh, and that is how we find that these knowledge portals are going to be very, very useful. Right. Thank you very much.